hello and welcome to everyone now properly to the last life heart lesson of 2019 to those of you who are here for the first time for this last lesson of the decade i'm zuzanna my name is zuzanna albridge and i'm a harpist and harp teacher based in edinburgh scotland please let me know if you can hear me if you can see me okay i suppose this life will be not extremely busy because most of you are maybe away or maybe still in bed i hope so that you're enjoying your rest if you can but if you're somehow tuned in on social media today let me know and if you're rewatching it later you can just let me know how your christmas were and how are you doing today are you enjoying time off today or did you have to go to work if if you had to i'm feeling very sorry for you especially if the weather is similar to what we have today in Scotland, quite gloomy, grey and a tiny bit wet. But I hope you got some nice plans for the New Year's Eve, even if it's just sitting in at home and playing board games, which is probably what I might be doing, then uh, that it's something you are looking forward to. Okay, let me just check my notes for today. Today's topic is what you can do to make the most of your harp lessons and this will be three steps that you can do before you even start taking those lessons. Something which, uh, which is contrary to what most people assume is the first thing. So as I said a few episodes ago, you don't have to buy the harp. That's definitely not the first thing that's most important or most helpful. For more information, go to the a few episodes back. I'll put a link in the notes. Um, there will be a few other things which are actually much more helpful that you can do before starting lessons. Uh, as you can see on Facebook and on Instagram, I suppose as well, this is lesson number 31. We had over 30 lessons on the harp, those free tutorials in 2019. You can watch all of them on my website. There is a link in my bio on Instagram that will take you to today's lesson, but you will be able also to see, go to the resources and see any of the previous lessons there. For Facebook, I will also put a note to that, but same, if you go to the link that's currently in the description of the live, then you will find all the other lessons and all the videos. You can also download PDFs, free PDFs with notes, practice notes. There are different things for every lesson. You, If you sign up to the, um, to the newsletter, all subscribers get free access to all the PDFs. You can either click the link on the website for today's live or any other lesson uh, from lesson seven, we've got PDFs in every lesson. Um, today I wanted to talk about something which has been in that subscriber sections for a long time, but I think not many people have been here with me from the beginning. I have a few new followers, so you may not all know that at the, you may not have all noticed that at the top of the resources page, the resources section for subscribers uh, for a while now has been hanging my ebook Discover the Harp, which is specifically aimed to people who will be only starting playing the harp in some time for someone who hasn't had much contact with this instrument before. So I wanted to talk a bit more about this today because it's uh, a big resource actually, very useful for anyone who is only thinking about starting to play the harp and we haven't had a lesson about that yet and I think it's worth reminding you and if you are a harpist and you know someone who would like to play the harp please pass on that info for to them so they can use the last days of 2019 possibly a break or a weekend to look into that um so let's start from the first of the three steps that that ebook is specifying three first of the three things that you can do to make the most of your harp lesson to make the most of your harp playing when you uh, when you start so the very first thing is sitting something you can practice even if you haven't got the harp in front of you that's something you can practice in any situation in life where you're required to sit you can practice that uh, at your home you can practice that in your office at work you can practice that on the bus uh, with, at a waiting room at a dentist or waiting uh, for a doctor or any other appointment at a bank or elsewhere so something which is quite important when playing the harp it is because we we mostly play the harp seated. Of course, there are some harps that you can uh, strap on or that you can play while standing up. But most of the instruments that uh, we play are being played while seated. So it's quite important that we sit in the best possible way to 
have our body as free as possible to make all the movements that are required while playing the harp and to also um, just make sure that we're not hurting ourselves by sitting in a, in a funny way because when you focus on all the things that are happening here, if you've got any tension or, or stiffness in your body and you don't really move as you would move uh, normally, you don't quite have the opportunity to, to relax. So it's important that you sit in a way which is comfortable, but which allows you to just mm, relax every now and then and not get too tensed up. So when you look in the ebook, you will have all the pictures showing myself and chairs and different places where you can sit from different angles. But just to tell you a few things uh, about what's important, as you may see or you may not see, there is no um, any kind of... Um, oh, now I'm missing words in English. So there is nothing where I can rest my back upon. That chair that's actually a piano stool doesn't have any backrest. I think that's the name in English. And that's something that you don't need when you play the harp because when you play the harp, and this is actually the way that is more healthy to sit even if you don't play the harp, you would normally sit towards the edge of your chair or stool. And that means that there is quite a bit of space between any rest at the back. You don't really need to have your back uh, supported by anything while playing the harp. You're relying on just your spine and having both feet on the floor, about hip width apart, that will give your spine and back enough of uh, support. It should give you enough of support. Uh, if you have any back problems, it would be good if you see a harp teacher before you try to find another solution yourself. I don't recommend playing with your back against anything because that will affect your hips and all the balance of your body, your neck, your head. I sometimes see beginners who have tried playing a bit themselves and what they figure out the most comfortable thing is, is sitting on a sofa and rest, leaning against the sofa because the I think it's, it's because of the thinking that this is supposed to be that the hard playing is associated with a very relaxed activity with something which uh, is very tranquil and calm and we I think we also associate sofas and being in a very relaxed uh, sitting position with that but um, this will not be a good thing in the long run because of hard playing being such a physical activity and you actually need to pay attention to what your body is doing um, while playing so the most important takeaway is not uh, leaning against the backrest, sitting at the edge of the chair, sitting towards the front of the chair. And in the ebook, you will also find some details about what chair to choose and what is important when, uh, when looking at that. So for more details, head to the PDF. Then the next point, the next, I think is the biggest part of that ebook, actually the biggest part of that PDF is introduction to reading music. As you may know, if you've done a few uh, a bit of research um, before playing, it is possible to learn to play the harp with using two quite different methods. One is learning to read the music and play from the with the music from the music, and the other method is playing by ear. The second method usually requires a teacher to first show you how to play a song, and then you are repeating after them, after them building a few sections. This is just. A uh, very simply simple description, possibly oversimplified description of what's happening, but that means that you're um, following someone else who is playing, either from a recording or a teacher. I teach uh, with the music. I'm, uh, I was trained, and therefore I'm. I think I'm qualified, much more qualified to do that to follow that first approach. Uh, I think it's a very different set of skills teaching to, to teaching others to play by ear. I follow that first approach not only because I was trained in that, but also because I believe that it gives you much more independence in your playing. This means that even if your teacher um, doesn't work with you on certain pieces, you are still free after a certain time. You still have the skills that are necessary to work on those pieces on your own, either when you're away from the teacher or when you reach the level when you think it's uh, fine for you to stop having lessons, you are still free to explore the pieces. You are also free to look at the pieces on your own and then possibly bring them to your teacher saying, I really like that piece. I cannot find any recordings of that, but I like the way it sounds. Can we please work on that together? 
So that's why I um, encourage all my students to learn to read the music if they haven't done so before. And that's why I included that in the ebook, in the ebook. Um, a few more things that I wanted to say here. Um, even if you don't have the heart just yet and you start learning to read the music, it will be actually a really great thing to do it in this order. It's not necessary to have the heart to learn to read the music, you can learn to do this on its own as a separate thing. And I think this is actually something really great because you focus entirely on reading the music and you are not worried about the technique, about where your fingers go, what happens with your arms and the rest of your body. You're just focusing on how that system of writing uh, notes on the stave works and how to read it, how to determine the length of each note, how to make sure that they are fast enough or slow enough, how to manage the rhythm. There's quite a lot of um, maths involved in there, so it's a, it's a system on, on its own. And I very clearly see that people, prospective harpists who can read the music even a tiny bit, even if that was a long time ago and they've forgotten about it, they, or they think they've forgotten about it, they can focus later um, more fully on playing and not so worried about reading the music. Doing two things at a time can be quite challenging, it's possible of course, but if you can start working a bit more on reading the music before you start playing the harp, then that's going to definitely make that part of sitting at the harp and playing a lot easier. Um, more, moreover, uh, to addition about uh, learning by ear and learning to play the music, I, I'm sure that there will be people who will disagree about this with me. I believe uh, this is something that I observe from my teaching experience. I think it's quite a lot harder to learn to read the music once you've learned to play uh, the harp by ear. Again, it's not impossible, I just think it makes things a lot harder if you learn the started learning the second method just imitate well just imitating or following um, somebody else and playing um, by ear rather than reading the music i think once you start doing that then it's quite hard to motivate yourself to read the music and um, go to that go through that quite tricky system whilst i think if you start with reading the music playing the harp with the music you can quite easily still complement that by playing songs by ear. Even I sometimes do that, even when I, um, even though I can read the music, sometimes I just play some simple melodies uh, by ear because I, by at that stage, I already know how different pitches relate to each other. And also I can just figure it out on my own quite easily because I know where the notes are on the harp and how they relate. So I think it's much easier to move from reading the music to learning to play from ear. If you decide to, then, then the other way around. But again, I'm sure that there are people who could find arguments uh, the other way around. This is just my own experience from what I observe teaching um, um, I've almost a hundred of students over the last year. So that was, uh, that's my own opinion. So reading the music can be very helpful and it's something that you can uh, definitely spend doing while you're waiting for your harp to arrive, while you're looking for a teacher. This will not do any harp and you can safely engage in that and it can be quite a lot of fun. You can also check out my previous episode from last week where I was sharing um, some fun ways of practicing reading the music. Even when you haven't got the harp, you can still use the uh, free printable flashcards that I've added to the, uh, to the resources last week you can find them all in the same section. Okay, so we had the sitting at the harp, we had reading the music, that was second section, and then third section, the shortest of that ebook was listening. And that part consisted of three playlists, which you can play on YouTube, that you can just follow the links in the ebook. And they give you a few examples of what different genres of music can sound on the harp and also what kind of beginner pieces or intermediate pieces you may expect to play within your first years of playing the harp up to say five years. So there are different examples of pieces in classical genre. Um, sorry, Instagram, we're back now, <laughs> something 
came up on my phone. Um, so there is classical genre, the first playlist, then there is Celtic folk traditional playlist, and then there was modern pop jazz playlist showing what kind of pieces you can play on the harp. It's quite useful to have a look at that, not only to start getting to know the pieces that you might possibly want to play, but also to see what kind of kind of what kind of music appeals to you most. It's quite helpful when you arrive at your first lesson and you can already tell your teacher what kind of music you like or what kind of music you really don't like, just to make it um, as interesting as possible for you. Then your teacher can just ad uh, adjust slightly the pieces that they are working on you in those first lessons, just making sure that they are interesting for you and they will be able to guide you possibly finding more pieces of similar genre for you or um, showing you other pieces from, uh, how to say that, for example, if you decide that you're not quite into traditional music, they can possibly find pieces which are um, slightly on the outside, on the, oh gosh, I'm just trying to see what I'm trying to say. So even if you think that you don't like a certain genre, your teacher, teacher can find some pieces for you that will be quite different, but still within that genre, which will hopefully um, make you look a bit differently at them. So even if you think that you don't like a certain type of music, it's worth listening to it be, and be open. And that enriches you both as a musician and just helps you to be uh, a bit more versatile in your playing. Even if you don't like something, you can still uh, play that for someone else who enjoys that and, and make them happy. Um, but of course, the more you know about your preferences, the more you know what you want the more independent you will be in your journey and the, the more likely you're going to be to achieve your goals. So uh, it's worth listening as much as you can. And those short playlists are just a starting point, but I hope they will be a useful one. Many people, when they go um, on YouTube and type harp music, will be inundated with music played by harp virtuoso, which is of course really great. Some of those pieces though, are music which you need to train for 12 years, 15 years to be able to play. Some of them are um, just really, really hard. <laughs> even even for experienced harpies, they require months, months and sometimes years of preparation. And sometimes you might not be able to judge the level of difficulty if you haven't got experience playing the harp. And then it's easy to become slightly sad about this, thinking that you're not going to get there at any point, and that's not something you should um, you should do or you should worry about. Um, but I think it's quite helpful to find places where you can see pieces on beginners' intermediate level being played well, and see what can be achieved on the harp, or even in these very short periods of learning, a few months, a few years, a lot of different pieces can be played and can be uh, still played well. You don't have to go for the hardest ones straight away. So in a very, in a nutshell, that was the content of the ebook. Of course, there is much, much more in there. There are about 30 pages of pictures, of examples, of exercises. If you print it off, there are places where you can write things down for yourself so it can be a workbook for you that you can keep later and bring to your lessons. Um, the track just checking my notes. If there's anything that you find confusing or that you feel that you would like to find more about, you can just send a message to me. There is an email in the notebook, or you can put any kind of questions here in the comments. You can also uh, sign up for a trial lesson, consultation lesson with me if you have any doubts about starting to play the harp, learning to play the harp, whether you have, you're wondering, you may be wondering whether you've got the talent for that, which um, is another question that I think uh, is really not something important. It's about how many, how much time you can commit to that, how much uh, patience you have. Talent has not much to do with uh, with playing, and I and I've been talking about this quite extensively in a few posts earlier, but. I think I might be reminding that around the New Year's time when many people start to uh, thinking about learning a new skill, because I think it's true, not only with the heart, but many other things. It's not about uh, talent or ability or a particular skill. To some extent it may be, but I think you can overcome that by making sure that you put 
time into and time and effort regularly. So um, I think I said already that you can sign up for a trial lesson and then if you would like to have a long term work, um, sorry, if you would like to have a series of harp lessons and commit seriously to that, I'm opening bookings for harp course this January. Harp course is a series of 10 lessons, one to one harp lessons with me. They can be taken either online, like we speak right now, through Skype or Zoom, or they can be taken in person with me in Edinburgh, and that will be um, 10th of January when the bookings open. The dates for trial lessons are just before and during, and just after uh, 10th of January. You can sign up already, the dates are on my website and the link is in the same um, in the same section as the rest of the materials for the for this live so i hope you will find that easy but if not you can just put a put a question in a comment on facebook or send me a private message on instagram okay i think that's everything i will be of course wishing you all a new year later through posts but using that opportunity that i'm here in person i would like to wish you that 2020 will bring you everything that you hope for and that you wish for. If your um, goals and dreams have something to do with the harp, then I wish you all possible success and hope that will be an enjoyable journey. Uh, if you have any other goals, I hope you will enjoy the um, getting to them, not concentrate uh, so much about getting where you are, but also making sure that the journey is enjoyable um, I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand uh, what you mean. I'm definitely going to focus more on the journey. Goals are nice as well. And of course, I do have some goals for 2020, but I would like to also make sure that I enjoy getting there. Okay, hope you have a great New Year's Eve. And all the materials are in the links. I will put them up on the website today and I will let you know through, uh, through the stories. Any questions, just let me know. Take care and oh, one more important uh, thing, one important information, sorry, I realized that uh, next week we won't be having Facebook Live and Instagram Live. We, um, that will be 2nd of January, no, sorry, that will be 3rd of January, where there will no, where there won't be a Facebook Live. Uh, hopefully those two weeks with no new materials will let you spend more time looking through the ebook and reading through the many more pages than, than normally. I'm going to be back uh, with the live harp lesson on 10th of January, first lesson of 2020 will be then. Uh, I will be posting that again to remind you, hopefully no one will turn up hoping that I'm here and not finding me here, <laughs> but um, there will be reminders still. Okay, I think that's the very last thing. I'm wishing you all a very nice weekend, a very nice post-Christmas Friday and uh, have a very nice New Year's, New Year's Eve and then beginning of 2020. Take care. Bye.